Um, I'm really proud to be here today uh, and really stoked to be amongst a group of uh, very interesting and uh, grounded human beings. And in innovation, it's quite easy to kind of get wrapped up in apps. And I don't know how many people here have teenagers, but uh, a lot of those apps aren't very productive. Uh, but hopefully, <laughs> and technology therefore and often is, uh, is not very productive in innovation. So, uh, but we're all very grounded because we actually have to do stuff in the real world. We have to deal with lots of constraints and lots of issues. And, uh, and it's great to be amongst such an interesting group of people. So I'm one of the founders of uh, CommitWorks. Um, uh, and we have two products, Fusion and VisualOps. And what we believe is that successful organisations are built by people that make commitments to each other and then deliver on them. Seems quite simple, doesn't it? Um, and we've been doing this for about five years. And uh, we recently finished a project up in the Bowen Basin uh, where we were able to uh, be involved in producing a 50% increase in production off the long wall and a 40% increase in production uh, in development meters off their uh, development miners uh, in the space of about three months. Uh, over the last five years, we've delivered or helped and contributed to delivering a 74% increase in production for our customers against the market of about 21%, and uh, they've become safer in the, in the process. Uh, which is kind of interesting. So hopefully, I'll just put those up front because I want to kind of give a little bit of gravitas to this because, you know, results pay for work. And uh, we can talk about trust and commitment and all those kind of things. Those are, those are things that precede the ability to put these kind of results in the front. So uh, we believe that there's way too much waste in mining. And I would tell you that the, those kind of improvements there, there's no magic bullet there we've just reduced a whole lot of waste. People going to do something and not being able to do it because things weren't organised before they got there. Uh, so there's too much of that kind of waste. If you search for uh, how many people does it take to change a traffic light bulb, you'd be surprised how many of those kind of photos you find. Uh, and I think that a lot of that waste is not because people don't have an ERP or they don't have Gantt charts or they're not using a fleet management system. It's because they're using whiteboards, spreadsheets and pieces of paper to actually drive operations every day. And it's kind of bizarre in this day and age that these kind of massive organisations are actually trusting their day-to-day -day operations with these kind of tools. So I mean, this probably looks pretty familiar to most people. If you're still working out in the mining industry, not sitting behind a computer, you'd probably see these kind of things. So you know, that's how department plans get put together. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of work orders sitting on walls there. Even with uh, the most expensive ERP systems in the world, most people end up going to work with a work order they picked up out of a slot at the start of the shift. Uh, process whiteboards, people have done management operating system uh, implementations over the last few years, I'm sure. You know, spent many millions of dollars on those kind of things. Get some wonderful uh, whiteboards. Uh, one mine we just saw, you know, there's a whole lot of whiteboards that are all stacked up against the wall because they're on the way out. But they cost them about a million bucks to implement. And so, you know, we've got printed tools, someone's done lean here. Uh, and I pulled a couple of these off the internet to be completely honest with you, but, um, you know, post-it notes are kind of good because at least you can move them around. You can't really move a whiteboard around. So um, I think it's too hard to make and commit and keep commitments in most workplaces. And that's actually results in a lot of waste, a lot of production uh, delays, and a lot of incidents on site. Uh, one of our investors is a guy called Andy Gregg, who some of you may know. Uh, he said to me when we first met that 90% of the injuries that occurred when he was running Bechtel's mining and metals business occurred when people were doing unplanned work. Uh, which is a pretty extraordinary number. So, you know, people would go to work and they go, I've got to, done a pre-start, I'm organised, got the right equipment, the right people, right things to do the job, and then something will happen, they go and do something else. They didn't have the right gear, didn't have the right people, didn't have the right ladder to do something, whatever it might be, and that's when they got hurt. So there's a bit of a gravitas to that, and we think that if you can put a plan in the hands of the supervisor every day that makes sense, that means that they can trust it and expect to do that work, then you're more likely to keep people safe and they'll be a heap more productive than they would be if they don't have that. So this is a little bit of a complex slide, but I think what I'm trying to show here is that with all of the money, you know, some of these miners are just, you know, richer than God, having spent in production and maintenance and project work 
and our safety systems and people systems. All these things kind of end, if you like, at the weekly schedule. Yeah? And so to get it from the weekly schedule to the guy that's got to go and lead the work out there in the workforce, it's got to go through these tools that I was showing you just before. And so that amounts to 10 to 50% of the work that gets done on sites being planned. And I, when I say planned, I mean planned by a coordinator that's going to give something to someone to say, that's how you should do it. And I don't think that's good enough. And I think that, um, you know, even with all the fleet management systems and that kind of thing in the world, it's that, it's that supervisor that leads his crew to get stuff done that delivers productivity. So, in, a, in an environment where that's happening, you often get a situation where this supervisor says something like that. There's no way I'm committing to this plan. It never goes down that way anyway. And so the boss goes, well, if I can't give him a plan, I can't really trust them to get things done. And the crew go, bloody hell, this is a mess. These guys don't know what they're doing. So we think that a commitment system is a tool that pulls those things together and allows you to get to a point where 100% of the work is planned every day. So all workers go to work with a plan that was agreed by their bosses before they got there. So, and there's a lot of, lot of things that go into that plan, a lot of inf information. But it makes it easier to take those commitments, make them, and, and, uh, and deliver on them. And so that actually creates trust and commitment. Uh, this plan makes sense to me. I'm happy to commit my crew to it. I've probably had some input into it. This place feels like it's under control. We're actually getting some results. And the, the, the crew get more engaged because they have some input into the plan before it goes into action. So they feel proud that they've had a good shift. And they go to work and come home feeling safe and productive. Um, so if you can actually do that, put that plan in the person's hand, well then you can actually get into this whole plan, do, check, act cycle that Edwards Deming talked about in the 1950s and every MOS consultant since you know, Adam was a cowboy has been selling. So where, where Fusion and Commit Works fits into this is that we, we create a tool that is focused on that supervisor, that gets a supervisor a plan every day. And so it's not just enough to give them the plan, it's quite good if he can contribute to it as well. So here's a picture of one of our supervisors out there in the field taking photos, making notes about things, suggesting tasks that might need to be done. Once he's done that, then we get this fully integrated. We get all the systems, whether it's you know, your, your, your project, your, your mind planning system, you know, Exact or Deswick, or those kind of things, uh, your ERPs, your you know, SAP tasks, whether they come from SAP or Ellipse, you know, project plans, everything that's going to actually affect that guy, the roster, the leave that people have got, out of, out of spreadsheets into a system that says to the guy what he's going to do. Then you get everyone around in a, in a meeting. And in this particular site, these guys were brutal. If you wanted something done and you weren't in the meeting, it's not going to get done. But what they could be said, what, what was sure, is that everything that was in that plan was going to get done that day. That's what they were committing to. There was more, pe more people in that daily and weekly commitment meeting after we finished with them than they'd ever been. So then you're going to put, this, put the plan in the hand of the supervisor. So you're going to make sure at pre-starts and at handovers and that kind of thing, people are actually looking at the same thing that they were looking at uh, in, the, in the meeting before for pre-starts and handovers. This is a photo that was taken underground in Africa uh, last week. You've got a person with a, an intrinsically safe telephone operating using, short, using, a, using our app to do uh, short interval control out there in the field. These guys are world class. It's amazing. They've done it in such an incredible and, and, and quick way. They've managed to deliver this, this system. Uh, there's another guy who's at the end of shift closing out his plan. He's saying, here's what I was given and here's what I've done using our system. Uh, this is a photo that came out of the Anglo-American Investor website about three years ago saying that that improved production by 39% off their long wall. But uh, basically what's happening here is people are using the system to do their daily review meetings, their level one and two daily review meetings. So standing around, talking about the plan, working out what the variances were and what they're going to do about it. We send reports to people every day 
so that they can get they can take those to their meetings and uh, and rely on the information that's in there. And what what actually the, what this amounts to for an operation is that they are able to start saying nothing happens if it's not in fusion or things get done when they're in the plan. Make sense? Doesn't sound that hard, does it? Five minutes. Okay. Um, so so that was fusion, and so we, we built fusion you know, five years ago. Recently, we discovered that. Um, people needed to get sort of more aware of where things were on the site. And so we created a system called Visual Ops. It's kind of based on the idea that a good sketch or a good picture is better than a long speech. I don't know how many people you have, how many people sat in a pre-start meeting and someone's described that this issue is somewhere behind the sump three, you know, in the western corner of A pit or B pit or, you know, and you, and you think that people understand you, but mostly they don't. And so we think a picture is, is worth a thousand words. And so Visual Ops is uh, based on the idea that all mine workers must familiarise themselves with the hazards in the workplace before proceeding to work. But how do you do that? Read an OCE report? Give them an access to a database that shows them where the geotechnical hazards are? So this is a tool for making all that visible. Big touch screen in a, in a public place. Uh, there's uh, Zan Marie dropping a pin on a hazard she's found in an underground mine, putting that up to the system and making that available for everybody on site to see. So what we think is that the supervisor is the key, and so we want to set them up to succeed. And really, sort of the future, um, we, at the moment, we're, everyone's probably heard about the IT, OT convergence. So you know, we're trying to get all group IT systems into one place so that that supervisor knows what the plan is. Visual Ops brings the site OT system to, uh, to give the supervisor situational awareness so that he has a plan, he can see what it looks like, and see reality in the workplace. All of that is kind of a waste of time if they're not behaving in line with some kind of management operating system because that's going to get you the improvements day by day, five wires, that kind of thing. And I think the, uh, there's a really interesting opportunity. If you know exactly what was planned and you know what exactly happened and people are behaving within the, within the MOS, then you can pop up insights to say, hey, we just noticed that this task that came from SAP actually is only taking one hour instead of four hours as it's planned in SAP. Maybe we should change it in SAP, or maybe someone's not doing it correctly. So we've got thousands of users with some of the biggest miners in town, a growing number of partners. Um, and what I, I went to the GMSG in uh, Toronto last week, and I, when I came to the kind of conclusion that people didn't really... Uh, hadn't really got onto the page of what short interval control is. And um, I sort of drew this picture as I came out of it, and it's kind of complicated, but what it really is saying is that there's a MOS, right? And you can't do short interval control at the front line unless you can give people a plan that they can commit to. You can't give them a plan for the week divided by 14 shifts and expect that to be a good plan to go with. You've got to give them a plan that takes account of all the things that are going to happen to them and all the things that you know about, reasonably foreseeable things, so that when they get to work, they can actually run that. And I, the blue bit there shows where Fusion and uh, Visual Ops work. So we're covering all of that MOS stuff that you would otherwise go and get Purple, Deloitte, or uh, one of those kind of consulting firms to, to do for you. Uh, that was the implementation process that we went through. Uh, it took eight weeks on site to get to that kind of 12-week average of a 50% improvement. Uh, and really that's coming down to the fact that people are agreeing that nothing happens if it's not in the plan. So uh, some other results we've had. The Grosvenor project uh, for uh, Anglo was bought in $100 million under budget. It was in trouble and then they put everyone onto Fusion. So even the construction project was run in Fusion. Uh, and they bought it in $100 million under budget in seven months early. Uh, we did some work at Oakey Creek last year uh, and they delivered a 34% increase in production uh, and development meters uh, and the comment from the superintendent there was we're just a whole lot more organized now than we used to be. Uh, you've seen these graphs before uh, and that one. Uh, and really, you know, it, it seems kind of simple but I think the, just if we can kind of step back and go, wouldn't it be great if we could give a plan to a supervisor every day? What would actually happen if you could do that reliably, if that happened every single day in all of your operations, if you create a system that made that happen? There's a great, um, great uh, 
presentation by a guy called David Marquette who ran a, a submarine, a uh, nuclear submarine. And he said, uh, really some interesting insights, and you should watch it if you get, get a chance, but the, uh, what he said is that leadership is fundamentally about embedding the capability for greatness in the people and practices of an organisation so that you can decouple it from, from the personality of the leader, the heroic leader. Uh, and I think that what we're trying to do at CommitWorks and at Fusion is to produce a system which enables that on operations so that you don't have to have the heroic general manager that comes in and solves problems all the time. You don't have to have the heroic under manager. Those kind of you have a system which enables you to run the operation reliably and to continuously improve over time. Thank you. <laughs>